Tina and Emma have something they want to do. It's the story called The Lost Sheep. The Lost Sheep. A shepherd took care of 100 sheep. One day he noticed that one of his sheep was missing. The shepherd and wait, the shepherd looked and looked for his lost sheep. When he found it, he carried it home. He called his friends and invited them to celebrate. When we do things that are wrong, we wander away from Jesus. God forgives us and keeps us close to him. So the meaning of the story is if you don't pray a lot, you're a lost sheep. And if, if you're a lost sheep, the, God will try and find you and he bring you back. And when he brings you back, that means he forgives you. Well, that was better than any sermon I had prepared. Um. Hallelujah, Lord, to shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I can see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let's pray. Lord, remind us that you are always risen among us. And that wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever we say, you are present with the new life that has burst forth from the tomb. Help us to live day by day in that new life. In the life that has shattered the power of death and evil the life that has atoned for sins and seeks to live more godly all, every time. Help us to live in that. Now gather us around your word. Help us to hear it, and in hearing it, help us to live. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Friends, grace and peace to you today from God our Father, through our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I read a study a number of years ago, and I checked it again yesterday just to see if it was similar, that in the recorded history of the human race, this person took the last 3,500 years, that in the last 3,500 years, there were only 250 where no war existed. 
And what he used as a definition of war was any action involving more than a thousand people. And so that doesn't even count all of the smaller acts of violence that are done by small groups to one another, or even the lack of peace that can exist within one person. Because a war can rage within the heart and the mind and the soul of one human being and never be seen by anyone at all. The truth of the matter is peace, while we consider it a very good idea, rarely exists among us. Or if it does exist, it does not exist for very long because there are so many things that seek to disturb it. So many things that cause strife and conflict, frustration and anger to burst forth and shatter our peace. That's a natural explanation of humanity in the planet. We like the idea of peace, but we can't seem to achieve it or leave it or live it. We thought that we could somehow manufacture peace when I was a young person in college protesting against the Vietnam War. We thought if we protested long enough and loud enough that it would somehow bring the conflict to an end, but it didn't. And I think we discovered that the kind of peace we were seeking for had to come from some other place, not from among human beings, because we cannot seem to be at peace with ourselves. And there's all kinds of reasons for that. I mean, I could list them without end. But speaking as a pastor and speaking theologically, the reason that we cannot be at peace is that the sin still is very much active in our lives. It distorts and it bends and it twists. It leads us away from the one who is grace and mercy. It infects our lives so that we act against the peace that God would give us almost without thinking. And so it's surprising when Jesus comes to his disciples on the evening of the resurrection and says to them, peace be with you. And I don't imagine they could figure out why Jesus was talking about peace when they knew there were people in Jerusalem looking for them. People who were just as willing to crucify the 11 of them as they did to Jesus. What kind of peace could he be talking about? The world was in a tumult, and that world could very directly affect them. But he said again, peace be with you. Because the peace that Jesus was bringing with him that day was not the peace that the world strives for. It's not the peace that you and I seek to have in our lives or the peace that humanity aches for. The peace that Jesus was bringing with him was a much different kind of peace. It was peace of God. The peace of God that had confronted sin and death and the power of evil and by Jesus' death and resurrection has shattered them and broken their power over us. The world still rages and fights among itself, but the peace of God has come amongst us in the person of the risen Christ. And that's where Jesus wanted his disciples to focus and to understand their lives now existed in that peace. But Jesus didn't just leave his disciples in peace in that room behind those closed doors. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. You are to take the peace that God has won for you through the dying and the rising of his son and go out into that angry, disrupted, disjointed world and proclaim the peace of the Lord to anyone who will listen and even to those who refuse to listen, even to those who, when they hear it, instead of rejoicing and thanking you, will seek to harm you and destroy you and, yes, maybe even want to kill you but you are to carry the peace that I have won through my dying and rising out into that disruptive, broken, warring world because it is the only peace that the world has any hope in. 
Now, if I was one of the disciples sitting there thinking to myself, he's got to be kidding. I don't have the skills for that kind of thing. I don't have the courage for that kind of thing. I'm terrified of what they might do to me if he sends me out there saying that Jesus is raised from the dead and that God is at peace with everyone. But Jesus doesn't leave them alone. He doesn't give them this message of God's peace and leaves them unequipped to proclaim it. He breathed on them and gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that if you forgive the sin as any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. You are equipped now, disciples, with the Holy Spirit, so that when you speak the word of my peace, of God's peace, the power and the authority behind that isn't just from you. It is from the Father who sent his only Son into the world, who suffered and died on the cross and was raised on the third day, shattering the power of sin and death. Therein lies the power and the authority behind your words of God's peace. And you will proclaim that word to the whole world. Whether they listen or not, whether they rejoice with you or they seek to harm you, you will proclaim the peace of God because it is the only peace in which we have any hope. We've already seen that the peace from war is a thing so ephemeral that it won't even last a day. We all know that within ourselves, there are things that war against each other emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. We struggle with that kind of lack of inner peace because we're human and still afflicted by what sin does to us. But as we live in Christ, as we live within his mercy and his grace, in our baptisms, drenched in his resurrection, the peace that comes from God that says all of these things that seek to destroy and distort and twist have been undone, and you may find your peace in me. And the early Christians discovered that they could do that, that they could be at peace with Christ, be at peace with God the Father, be at peace with themselves, even as they were being led into the arena to be martyred, even as they were hunted down to be killed, even as they proclaimed the word and the grace in God and were killed for it, they had the peace of the Lord because God's peace does not depart and it transcends the world. It is not an easy kind of peace to have. It isn't the kind of peace that the world offers which can be gone in an instant. It is the kind of peace that will go with us into the darkest of valleys it is the kind of peace that will be with us in, in face of all our internal torments or on the wars that exist outside of us. It is the kind of peace that allows us to stare our own death in the face and be able to say to ourselves, what can this do to me that Christ cannot undo? And even as I die, I can be at peace because I have the Lord's peace. That is what you and I are called to give to the world. We can't bring peace that will end war between nations. That simply lies beyond us. But we can bring the peace of Christ to every soul still tormented and enslaved by sin, to every human being who is still broken in body, mind, and spirit, who, like ourselves, has discovered the peace of God that exists only in Jesus Christ. We can carry that peace out into the world. We can proclaim it. We can live it. We can be it. Until the Lord himself returns, and then all the wars, all the sins, all the dying, and all the brokennesses will be gone and won't even be a memory. But until that day, take with you the peace of the Lord, as did the disciples from that first Easter evening. Take it with you out into the world and be at peace. Peace in Christ. Peace in the knowledge that you belong to God. And let yourselves become the peace of the Lord in the lives of those around you. Amen.